In this quick medical animation demo in Cinema 4D, we're going to use hair to make microvilli. If you'd like to learn more about medical animation as a career, I'll be launching a new course in the first part of 2025. You can find out more information about that. There's a link in the description. Uh, sign up for a newsletter, a couple free things, and I'll let you know when the course is live. Let's get going. So you can do so much more with hair than just make hair, right? You can use it to create pretty much any object that you want to. Uh, and have it bend and flow the way hair does. So let's figure out how to do that. We're gonna start off with a simple landscape object with uh, 50 by 50, and we're, we're gonna change this in the future here, but we're gonna give it just 50 by 50 segments. I wanna have uniform uh, polygon structure. So if I make this wider later, I'm gonna increase the polygonal division. And we wanna just uh, start off with something that's pretty uh, light in terms of the amount of polygons and things we're, we're working with. And so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off borders at sea level, and then I'm gonna decrease the height to something like maybe 15, so it's just a, lot, a little bit of uh, texture or a little bit of uh, surface geometry, uh, topology to work with. All right, uh, so the first thing I wanna do is create hairs. And to do that, we just go up to simulate hair objects, add hair. And right now, if we were to turn on our IPR and do a quick render, we're going to see that this is filling in our entire landscape object um, with a lot of hair. And we want to just change a few things in this hair setting so that this is uh, giving us fewer hairs. So let's check this out. So guides, first thing I'm going to do is instead of saying root at polygon vertex, I'm going to say root polygon center. So each polygon has a single hair. And this is just the guides right now, right? And so what I want to do now is tell the hairs to use the guides because it's not currently doing that. The guides are just giving us an idea and the hairs uh, are doing their own thing. So what we need to do is change um, the roots. Instead of being auto, we want to say as guides. And what that will do now is it's only generating a hair on each one of the guides. So you can see that that is actually occurring now. So that is good, that's the first step. Uh, from here, I wanna create something other than the hair to duplicate on this surface. And what I'm gonna do is create uh, just a cube. And then that cube, I'm gonna tell it to be like 20 by 20 by 100. The height of these guides uh, by default is 100. And so I'm making a shape that's exactly the same height as the guides. And we can manipulate that further down the road. I am looking at my uh, lines view so that I can see how many divisions I'm making. So to do a like cylinder sort of microvilli appearance, I'm gonna just increase the number of subdivisions a little bit. I'm gonna put this whole thing in a subdivision surface so we get a pill sort of shape, uh, and then, or a capsule, however you want to think about that. I'm going to tell my, so I've got five subdivisions. I'm going to hit C to make that editable for this cube. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my uh, edges manipulation. I'm going to hit UL to select the loop right here, E to grab my move tool, and I'm just going to reposition uh, this so that the bottom of this feels a little bit now it looks like a you know tube of lipstick or, or whatever you want to think about it as and uh, let's see we're going to just take this now uh, I want to have something that's subdivided but not too crazy subdivided so I'm actually just going to do a single subdivision and uh, I'm going to take this now and make it editable so I'm going to hit C on that now this is going to be our micro villi model. And this is what I'm gonna duplicate into my hair. Okay, so what I wanna do is come into here and under generate, under the hairs object, uh, it's going to say, instead of type none, we're gonna change it to instance. I'm going to open up this instance, and what I'm going to be instancing is this model. All right, so now it is duplicating this model uh, as the hair across every single hair right now, which is perfect. All right, so all we have to do is make some 
um, some changes now. I'm going to go ahead and hit NA, or going same as going up to display, uh, and clicking that top one with outlines, so that I can see what's actually happening here. Now I want to change the size of this. So, so even though it's using the model right now to generate this, it doesn't look like this model, and that's because the thickness isn't accurate. And you'd think you'd be able to just come into the hair and change the thickness, but you can't. You actually control the hair thickness through the material, which is weird. So I'm going to come into the hair material, uh, and I'm going to click on thickness. And I'm just going to make it the same thickness uh, as I generated the model. So it was 20 and 20. I'm going to have to reduce this probably, right? So this is the same size as the model I made. I'm going to go ahead and knock it down to like 15 by 15. And that's going to give my microvilli a little bit of space here. I might even make it a little smaller than that. Let's try 12 by 12. So already, because of the using the landscape object the way I did, uh, what I'm getting is this nice sort of variation uh, in the surface, right? So the reason I used the landscape is to get this variation in the surface so it wouldn't be just a completely even object. And these are indeed hairs right now. So if I hit play, it's going to fall down and collapse just like <laughs> a field of sausages. Uh, so like it would with any hair model. So that's cool. And you can see it's very responsive. Um, but what I want to do is actually turn off gravity. And the way we do that is we come into the hair object, we come into forces, and we're just going to turn gravity to zero. I do not want to turn on the forces hair to hair and surface to hair. You can do that uh, if you want to do the, some really complicated dynamic simulation with the hair so that they actually bump into each other. Um, but it's going to really, really, really slow your system down. So my goal right now is just to create a field of microvilli that I can manipulate and have them subtly move. Um, and I'm going to do that just by changing settings and trying not to make them look like they're bumping into each other. Like, I feel like these do not look like microvilli. They're very tall. And I purposely did this because I want to um, manipulate the microvilli, but I want to use the entire hair surface. So uh, I'm rambling on, but let me let me do some things first. So you can use all of the forces on the hair. So if I put in some uh, turbulence, for example, and pump my frame rate of my frame uh, length up to 300 frames and hit play, we're going to see they're going to relax a little bit. And then you're going to see uh, the turbulence actually doing its thing, right? So, but they are going through each other and uh, not really behaving exactly the way I want them to. So what I want to do is manipulate the turbulence a little bit. I want to scale it up to something like maybe 25. Uh, maybe the strength is going to be like 3. Uh, I might change the frequency down to something like 50. And then I want to play this again and see how it feels. So it's really, uh, it is kind of pulling a, a little bit too much and that's a lot of motion. So maybe what I could do is come into my hair object and instead of having my gravity be zero, I could have it be something like positive two. What that's gonna do is pull up on the hair, right? So it's pulling up on it vertically and it's giving the hair a little bit uh, of tension with the gravity so that they're uh, interacting with the turbulence, but not quite as heavily. And the next thing I want to do is just kind of cut these in half, right? Like vertically, I don't want them to be as tall, so I'm just going to shrink them down a little bit. I'm going to come into hair, uh, and actually I'm going to come into the hair material. And I want to change the length, uh, and right now I can't really do that. But if I come to the basic tab, uh, I can turn on length. And that's going to automatically change the length uh, a little bit for me, which I like. And I, I now have this option to have a length and a uh, variation. And so I'm going to change this to 50% and 10. And so that's what this is essentially doing is making the microvilli uh, grow along the hair stalk, right? But it's only using half of it. And so now the um, manipulation that's happening with the turbulence isn't quite so you know, heavy handed. It's moving, it's nice and slow, it looks really good and pretty. Um, and so this is how uh, I would recommend just using hair to create something that feels you know, pretty realistic. So you can just play around with your turbulence scale if you want it to be bigger and have uh, less um, 
sort of erratic motion, maybe even like 70, something like that, right? So this feels a little bit more believable in terms of like how things might move in the intestine. And of course this would work with, like you could make uh, sea anemones with this, for example, same process. Um, okay, so this is looking pretty cool. I like the variation that I'm getting in height. It feels more realistic and believable. Uh, in terms of the animation that I showed at the beginning of this video, uh, the next steps involved would be to make a material. And there's a couple things you have to do to make the material actually work. So let's just go ahead and make a material. I'll just give it a little bit of a sort of a pink appearance. And we'll throw that on our model, our microvilli model right there, right? I also want to put my hair itself in a subdivision surface. So I'm going to hit Option or, uh, or Alt and click on the subdivision surface. And now we're getting these nicely subdivided, smooth microvilli. And the beauty of that is I can turn the subdivision in the viewport off and only get that nice smoothness in the render uh, when I get to that stage. Okay, so I want to make this a little longer and I want to curve it. So let's do that. Um, okay, so I want to make sure that when I render this, uh, it's going to render with the material. And you'll notice right now, if I do turn on my IPR, uh, it isn't it isn't using the material that I put on there. So you have to make a couple of changes in the hair itself. You have to come into the generate tab uh, onto the hair, and there's just one little button here that says you keep textures, right? And that button is going to allow me to port over the texture from my model to the um, little sausages on here. Uh, so I could also come into my basic tab on my hair material. And I'll just turn off specular and highlight. I really don't need any of that. Uh, you could even do things like add kink if you wanted to uh, and just like turn it down a little bit so there's a little bit more, um, like maybe I'll just do like 5% with a 5% variation or something like that. So it's just a little less perfect. Uh, I, and I think I wanna just modify the length a little bit and just do like 5% variation in height. Yeah. Okay, so you're always just making the changes and manipulating things as you go. Now if I play, um, I'm getting this nice, uh, subtle sort of variation, and things are overlapping a tiny bit, so I think I'm going to take my turbulence and just turn it down to like two centimeters. That'll keep things from overlapping so much. And just to show you, like if I really did come into the hair uh, and turn on the dynamics, like hair to hair collision under forces that instantly slows my machine down so heavily like it's actually going to lock up now probably so uh, hopefully that'll undo i can hear my fan on my computer winding up so that's why i didn't click those it really just ties your system down so um, if you can get it to look good without using those collisions uh, you'll be better off i think all right, so if I already want to do recreate the animation that I uh, showed at the beginning of this video, I would just throw a couple of bend objects or bend deformers on this landscape object. So I'm just going to rotate one here, put it over, copy it, paste it, oops, rotate it around this axis now. It's important to do that. Uh, it's not super important, but I'll show you why I did that. Uh, and I'm going to take both of these and just make them a little bit longer. Like you can spend time doing the things uh, perfectly to get them to align, but it's not really necessary. Uh, let's do that. This, I'm going to put this on the landscape object. And the reason I did that rotation the way I did is now I can just bend these like this. And I'm going to get this nice... Um, surface and I could say keep length if I want to and then it's going to be less distorted uh, and you know that's pretty that's working pretty well right so it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do I can set up a camera angle in here and just push through without any problem at all uh, another thing I thought I might do is make this a little bit longer right so maybe we could double the length of this so in the Z here I could uh, make this 12 Maybe I won't double it. Maybe I'll just make it like 
It's 600 now, I'm gonna make it 900. So it gets a little longer. Uh, and then the depth segments, I'll make 75 so that we have even subdivisions. And now that I've done that, you're gonna see that like things have changed, what has happened? Uh, and the reason this happens is that the guides are being uh, controlled by the hair and it's only making a certain number of guides because that's really what I told it to do earlier, right? So I told it how many guides to make and that guide number has to change with the number of polygons. So, but there's a nice trick. You can just like, you know, add a zero in here or something like that. And it's automatically gonna figure out what it actually needs to be. And that'll fill in and uh, reduce that to what it wants to be, right? So now I have the right number of polygons in here to do what I was trying to, to do. Uh, I think I wanna move these over just a little bit. And now if I hit play, you know, things are slowing down a little bit, um, but it's still working pretty well. Uh, but from here, it would be really simple just to set up a, a nice camera motion and just zoom through the tops of these polygon, um, the tops of these microvilli, and you'll get the animation like I set up at the beginning. So uh, here's a, here again is the final result with lighting and uh, camera motion over 600 frames. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If it's been helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in another video.